Hello and welcome to the It Depends podcast. I am your host. My name is Kevin Goldsmith. I am the author of It Depends, writing on technology leadership from 2012 to 2022. And I'm delighted to be back with you again. The podcast continues to do well. Thanks for everybody that shared it or somehow how uh, more people have picked it up. The newsletter is, is doing well. For those of you who aren't subscribed to both, I alternate weeks. So next week will be a newsletter. This week is the podcast and, and we go that way. If you haven't heard the podcast before, what we're doing is serializing the audiobook of It Depends chapter by chapter, episode by episode in order. So yes, you will get the entire audiobook if you listen to every episode of the podcast, but also in the podcast, I'm adding more detail about each of the chapters, giving you a little bit more flavor around them. So it's sort of maybe a little bit of the director's cut. And hopefully that's valuable to you, or at least it seems to be because more people are continuing to subscribe. Thanks again. I'll, I'll do my book plug and then I'll leave you alone because I'm sure you're all tired of it, but that's why we're here. The book is available everywhere internationally. You can get it at your local bookstore. They're going to have to order it probably. You can get it online at all your favorite book places. It's including audiobook now. It's on Audible. It's on Spotify. It's all the places you might get an audiobook now as well. So that's all working really well. You can get the soft cover everywhere. The hard cover is only available on Amazon. So that's the only caveat. I mentioned this in the newsletter and it actually turned up a bunch of uh, folks who are interested. And so I will mention it here. A friend reached out and asked for a signed copy of the book. Thank you, Vincent. And so, yeah, I hadn't even considered it, honestly, um, that somebody would want that. And since then, other folks have reached out as well. I thought about setting up just like a storefront where you could order one, but the volume isn't enough where I'm ready to do that, or I just haven't a way, found a good way to do it in a non-clunky way. So if you're interested, just reach out to me at contact at itdependsbook.net and ask, say, hey, I would like a signed copy, and then we can, we can work it out. For those of you who have asked, I ran out of hardcovers. I have more coming. They should be in within a week or so. And most of those are already claims for signed copies. So I've already put in another order for author copies. So I should have some more. But that takes, obviously, it takes a little while only because I don't have stacks and stacks of the books at home. Speaking of, all the information about the book is available at itdependsbook.net. That is the website. It's got links to all the stores I'm aware of for both ebook book and audiobook. So please uh, visit there if you have questions, if you have comments, anything, that email address I gave, contact at itdependsbook.net. That's how you reach me. Let's get into the chapter. Actually, this week, we're going to do two chapters. There's a couple short chapters in a row, and I don't mind them in the book. It's kind of a, a nice break up so you're not reading lots and lots of long things it's a nice way you know it's a it's an easy easy chapter to get through it makes you feel good but there's a few of those in the book and there's a few in in a row and so we're going to cover two chapters today one is called own your calendar and the next one is called in 2018 decide to work deliberately so what i'm going to do is i'll talk about own your calendar then we'll listen to own your calendar and then i'll talk about the, the next chapter. The chapter is short because I'm describing a technique I use to manage and understand how I use my time. And I describe it. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail into it because I describe it at a high level. Because I'm not, you, you know me, if you've read the book or you've listened to the podcast or read the newsletter, I don't like being very prescriptive about things. I like telling you, this is kind of how I do it. It works pretty well for me. It may work for you or steal the idea and, and, and use it yourself. But make your own take on it because I don't like when people tell you do it, this thing exactly the way I do it and you'll be successful. 
So I'm going to give you a little bit more detail. And, and I talk about it, you know, in the chapter. I describe things at, at a very high level. What I actually do, I have a sheet that I use, I fill out. In the last podcast, we talked about the process I use, this kind of personal offsite. As part of that offsite, I spend a lot of time thinking about what are my goals and what I should I be working towards in the next six months and how, how should I be growing and, and what am I doing well and what do I want to do more of, all those kinds of things. And it's a day-long process. Somewhere in about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way through that process, I actually have a sheet. And that sheet says, what does a normal day look like? What should a normal day look like? You know, an ideal day. We, there is no normal day in our jobs. But what would an ideal day look like? Similarly, I also have a sheet that says, about what percentage of my time should I be spending on one-on-ones with my directs, team meetings, peer meetings, project meetings, and dedicated kind of heads down work time. And this is very much focused towards a work day. The idea being, again, in an ideal week, because there are no normal weeks in our jobs, but in an ideal week, about how much of my work time should I be spending doing each of these things? If I, after having thought about my goals and thought about what I want to do, now, what should a week look like if I'm going to try and achieve those goals? And I end up with a number of hours, work hours, that I think per week I should be spending on -on one-on-ones with directs, one-on-ones with skip levels, project meetings, team meetings, peer one-on-ones, the whole normal kind of stuff. And now that I have that goal, that's sort of the ideal week. When I start working, then starting the next day, starting the next work day, I start looking at what am I actually doing? So at the end of every week, I describe in the chapter, I have a spreadsheet. I mean, I have a spreadsheet. And at the top of that spreadsheet, each column is one-on-ones, skip level one-on-ones, peer one-on-ones, team meetings, project meetings, et cetera. You know, focus time, et cetera. And other, because there's always other stuff that comes up. And every week, at the end of every week, I look back at my calendar for the week before. I say, okay, count up the hours of meetings. It's a, it's the closest approximation. I'm not going like, to track my time every minute of the day. But I look at the calendar and go, okay, Monday, I had you know, this many one-on-ones with directs. I had this many skip levels. I had this many one-on-ones with peers. And I kind of count it out. And so in each row is a week. And then I know, okay. And it's approximate because, again, I'm not going to track my time minute by minute. I actually did think about trying to do that. It's, it's too much work. As I go through week by week by week, I can see, am I using my weeks the way I wanted to use them in an ideal situation? Again, some weeks will be better, some weeks will be worse. But I can see the trend. And if the trend is, well, I wanted to spend... You know, and the goal is to, to have as much time to focus on the stuff that is easy to put off because that's usually the kind of sharpening the saw type of work. So I'll look at every week and I'll go, okay, well, wow, I spent a lot more time in, you know, peer one-on-ones than I wanted to. Is that a special week because there's something going on? Or is that just like, no, it just kind of worked out that way. And as I see these trends emerge, I either go, you know what? I didn't allocate in my ideal week. I didn't allocate enough time for peer one-on-ones. I should probably, you know, change what, that, what I expect and, and, and learn from it. Or I'll say, you know what? I'm probably spending more time than I should in peer one-on-ones. That's taking more of my time than it really should, ideally. I'm going to figure out either how to shorten them, how to possibly combine them, or, you know what? Turn some to every other week instead of weekly. So I'll do those kinds of things and I'll adjust my calendar as I go. How good am I about doing this all the time? Sometimes better than others. Sometimes the whirlwind, sometimes uh, something's going on, just completely capsizes it, I get a few weeks behind. 
But yeah, it's fine. I catch up. It's kind of a, it is a little bit of pain, but it is, I've found it really worth it. And it's just, again, me understanding, you know, we, we all have that, you know, future self fallacy, which is it's end of March, beginning of April. Now, Kevin in May is going to be spending like 20 hours a week just contemplating strategy for the company and investigating new technologies and, you know, doing all these things that you really think you need to do or we do need to do as part of, certainly as part of a CTO job. But then realistically, and I, and I can say that now because future Kevin's awesome. Future Kevin's amazing. And like the Kevin I always wanted to be. Current Kevin, no, I got pulled into this meeting. I got pulled into this meeting. This wild thing happened this week and it completely blew up my calendar. And then something like that happens every week. And realistically, current Kevin is really only spending about, you know, if I'm lucky, five, six hours doing work on that, or honestly, sometimes way less than that because of other stuff that's coming up. So this helps me kind of get back in touch with future Kevin and the Kevin I want to be in my job. So that's why I do this process. And even when I'm not meeting my own goals, it is good for me to be aware of it and not end up at the end of six months when I do my personal offsite again saying, I didn't get anything done. Like I want to do all these things for my own growth or for the company or whatever. I got none of them done. Why that happen? And realize I, cause I didn't put any time towards it. This helps keep me honest. It's just one of the tools I use. Again, works for me, may or may not work for you. It depends on who you are and what kinds of things work for you. This specific thing I do, yeah, may be perfect for you. Or you might say, well, that, I don't want to do this, but I like that idea. I'm going to take that idea. That's, what I, that's why I describe it in general in the chapter. So let's listen now to Own Your Calendar. Own Your Calendar, originally published on July 20, 2021. Every six months, I take a day to review and reflect on how things have been going and the changes I want to make moving forward. This day is my personal strategy offsite. As part of the process, I think about what I want to do more of, what I want to do less of, and how much time I should allocate each week towards my professional goals. I then create a sample of what a perfect day would look like and a mock up of what an ideal week would look like apportioning my time in alignment with my goals. With my review and planning done, I go to my work calendar and clean it up to make it look like my ideal week. I delete or stop attending meetings that are not useful. I block out time for focused work on my goals. Then, to give some flexibility for the things that arise, I make sure that I leave some gaps or mark some of my project work time as free, allowing others to schedule it if needed. Each week has unique challenges. Unforeseen work appears, a critical customer meeting dominates, or a work emergency takes over my calendar. At the end of the week, I look back at the calendar and figure out how much my time spent maps to my planned time allocation. Often I find that new things are creeping in if I'm not attentive. As my time diverges from my ideal allocation, I must decide if I change my plan based on my new reality, and possibly adjust my goals, or reassert my plan and delegate or drop the new constraints on my time. I track each week's time allocations in a spreadsheet. It helps me understand where I'm spending my time over the year. In addition, it makes it very clear if I'm spending too much time on low-value work. The spreadsheet also shows if I'm unrealistic about how I allocate my time in a week, which is helpful for the next six-month planning. This process may seem very rigid, and in many ways it is. However, I've come to it over the years through iteration and finding myself feeling very busy, but not making meaningful progress towards my personal or professional goals. As we grow in our roles, new opportunities and responsibilities appear. Our peers, team, and others want our input and time. This activity gives us the impression that we are doing necessary, valuable work. We may look at our full calendars at the end of the week and wonder what we accomplished. If this situation seems familiar to you, it may be worth adding some rigor to understand how you want to spend your time and how you actually spend your time.
This next chapter is called, In 2018, Decide to Work Deliberately. I will fully admit that this chapter reads a lot like a think piece, kind of a fortune contributor type of thing with a bit of a clickbaity headline. Fully admit it. Published it on January 1st, 2018. However, it is actually something I believe in and something I wanted to talk about. You will hear me or read me say a lot of things about being deliberate. In that last chapter, we talked about owning your calendar and how do I try to approach it in a very deliberate, very thoughtful way. I try. I think about what's the best way to do this. I think about who I am and how could I achieve this. And, you know, don't just go from my gut. When I got started as a manager, I got a lot of advice about going with your gut, or I read books that talked about going with your gut and kind of shooting from the hip. The essence of leadership is making decisions with, with incomplete information, which, which it is, but that can be also read as just don't worry about, don't worry about the information, just go, just go with what you think. And I got into some really bad habits and I made up rules that don't make sense. Assembling sort of a, a theory of how to do our job. Man, I wasn't as, I was a much worse manager for having, for doing that. I was lucky more than I was good. And so because I was lucky, it, it mostly worked out, but not always and not always without some collateral damage. And I, over the years, I got, as I had more experience and I had other mentors and I read other books, I learned to be a lot more deliberate. And so that's really what this chapter is about. It's very easy to just pattern match all the time. And, and that is kind of what we do. We're humans. We see a situation similar to the situation we've seen before, and we did something in that last time that worked well, so we're just going to do that again without thought. And what I have learned as I have done this job more is, you know what, it's actually worth it to take a second, not take a day or a month or a year, but take a second, take a beat, think about it a little bit, Make sure maybe I don't have all the information I'd like to have, but maybe there's some other information I could get and not hard. Maybe there's a question I should be asking instead of just reacting to what I just heard. Maybe I should compare this. Think about how this is similar or different from what I've seen before and think about how should I react instead of reacting. You will hear that idea, this deliberate, make a choice idea. That is probably one of the things that permeates my writing. Aside from the, what worked for me, not necessarily going to work for you, but I'll tell you what worked for me and I'll tell you how it worked out. And you can decide, you know what, that sounds great for Kevin. It's never going to work for me. Or you can decide this part sounded good. Nah, the rest, I'm not sure. That's fine. Or you can say, that sounds exactly what I need. I'm going to try it. But make a decision. Think about it. Don't just say, well, Kevin wrote in the book, so that's the way I'm going to do it. We have uh, coming up in a later chapter, we talk about the Spotify model. And we talk about why companies shouldn't blindly adopt the Spotify model. Because I was at Spotify during the the sort of well-known heyday period of that Spotify model. And I saw lots of companies adopt it without thinking about it. They just adopt it. Well, it works for Spotify. It should work for us. And if they put a little bit more thought into it, they would have said, why is this working for Spotify? What is it about Spotify that makes this work? You can turn that idea. You can ask that question about anything. You can ask that question about Kubernetes. You can ask that question about... Docker. You should ask these questions. It's 
these are things everybody uses. Why? Like, what problems are they solving? Are these actually the problems we have? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But it's worth actually thinking about it instead of just saying, well, everybody else does it, therefore we should probably do it too. Or it worked for me at this other company that's a completely different company that in a completely different space, but it should probably just work for me again. Or I like it, so I want to do it. And you can apply that to basically every decision we have to make all day long. Again, it's not about analysis paralysis and not recommending that or saying that's okay. What I'm saying is take a beat, think about it, and then when you're comfortable that you're not just shooting from the hip or going with what's gone before, then you can go forward. So here is in 2018, quick baby title, in 2018, decide to act deliberately. And it's 20, it's not 2018 anymore. You can still decide to act deliberately. In 2018, Decide to Work Deliberately, originally published on January 1st, 2018. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and to see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. Henry David Thoreau. You may have heard this quote before. Maybe it resonated with you or maybe not. What does it mean to live and work deliberately? I've thought about this a lot over the last few years. Earlier in my career, I certainly wasn't deliberate. I went with my gut a lot. Some of it was my lack of experience, and some of it was an overinflated ego. As I got more experience, I looked back at earlier decisions that I had made as a leader and realized how poorly considered some of them were. I could have put myself and my team in a much better position with more thought. I've also been lucky enough to work with people who have modeled what approaching work thoughtfully can look like. Consider all the decisions you make in a day at your job. You work on this project instead of that one. You choose the opening phrase you make in your pitch to a customer. You attend this training or decide to skip it. You invite one colleague to lunch and not another. You hire this person instead of that one. How much thought do you put into each of these decisions? Do you know why you made this choice? Do you ever evaluate what worked well or poorly and what you might do differently the next time? Some of these decisions might seem obvious in the moment. Next time you encounter a decision that appears trivial, take a beat and just think about why the choice is so clear. Every choice you make means that you are choosing not to do something. Have you considered both options? Every decision is the start of a chain of events. What are the assumptions you are making about the effects of this choice? Later, return to your decision and test if your assumptions were correct. Was it still the best option? What did you learn from this that you will bring forward? Thinking strategically is thinking through your assumptions and the implications of a decision, and evaluating the outcome. Being strategic is critical for big company decisions, but it is also valuable in the decisions you make all day. It does take a bit of practice to do this, but as with anything you practice, it gets easier. It will eventually become second nature. So next time you make a hiring decision, or decide to work on Project X tomorrow, so you can do Project Y today, ask yourself, why is this the right thing to do? If you can't answer immediately, spend a minute and consider. You may realize that it isn't the right choice, and the next time you may spend more time making that decision. Look at every path closely and deliberately, then ask ourselves the crucial question. Does this path have a heart? If it does, then the path is good. If it doesn't, it is of no use. Carlos Castaneda So that was chapters from It Depends, writing about technology leadership 2012 to 2022. Hopefully those were helpful. Hopefully the background around them made them even more helpful. Don't forget, you can get any information about the book at itdependsbook.net. And you can reach me at contact at 
itdependsbook.net, especially if you'd like a signed copy. I've been really happy with how the podcast has continued to grow. Don't forget also to subscribe to the newsletter that'll cover different chapters than we're covering in the podcast. That's at kevingoldsmith.substack.com, where you can get the link from the, the Depends Book website. Please share this podcast. Please rate it. I've been super happy with how the podcast has been growing, but obviously, you know, I want to get it into as many people's hands as possible. So, you know, if you're enjoying it, please rate it. Please share it. Thanks. I'll see you on the podcast in two weeks. I'll see you on the newsletter next week. Thanks so much for listening. Please, again, subscribe, rate, share episodes of this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Thanks again. I'll see you soon. to answer Staple for the music in this podcast. This podcast is a production of Unit Circle Media.